Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us for this segment, we have Fausto Puglisi, President of Cyber Trading U, is also the founder of Cyber Trading U, and he's going to discuss how to use NASDAQ Total View to trade volatility in the energy sector. And Fausto, really the, the, the theme over the past month for sure, back since the beginning of the year, has been volatility in the energy space, of course, having um, um, being exposed to inflation, rising rates, and of course, the war in Ukraine. Right. There's been a lot of action going on on these specific stocks only regarding about those what's happened in Ukraine. And obviously it's been going to this has been going on all the way since the beginning of the year, but this just escalated so much more, and there's been so much action that have been happening on these specific stocks, not just on the commodity part about it, but also on the stock sector and the energy sector. And Fast, so take us through your first couple of slides here, and we can see that volatility. We just saw the first slide showing um, um, down 20%, but there's a few other numbers that I want to take a look at as well, because it really has been some significant movement. Yeah, a lot of people think like, you know, they look at the market and they think like, oh, the market's going down. I mean, we've been down a little bit, you know, from the beginning of the year, but the energy stocks have obviously have taken off tremendously. And sometimes you don't have to just focus on just, you know, one industry, you know, and thinking that that's it. There's so many other industries out there. And, and in this past month, uh, month and a half, especially what's going on with the war in Ukraine, the, and not only just that, but even the metal, uh, metal industry, metal stocks, like even like, U.S. Steel also, they've all been really blowing up and done very well. Right. And I mean, you know, you can look at our next slide here, up over 120 <laughs> percent. Is that crazy? So so sometimes people are just happy with just making a like five, 10 percent on a year. But just look on this short period of time, how oil ha has been up that much in, in such a short period of time, only in, in, in several months. Right. And if we look at your, your next slide here, we can see the four different stocks that you've been busy trading at cyber trading you certainly a lot of opportunity within this space yeah like you have the in you have the indo you have the impp uh ensv i mean oxy oxy they've all if you look at these charts i mean you're looking at these things not on on a, on a monthly basis but these are just in a couple of days jill these things have gone up like you could see it literally like 20 30 50 percent some of them i mean somewhere almost 100 percent in a short period of time so there's been a lot of opportunities out there to trade this industry specifically after what's been happening Right. And let's learn more about Total View and how you can use it to trade. And I'm glad that we started off here with a sector because it doesn't just have to be about the, the meme stocks that we hear about in financial media or, you know, one particular stock that's had a move on earnings or an FDA announcement or anything. You can actually get really high level and macro with this. So with our next slide here, we can see what Total View looks like and what you're looking for here. Yeah, I mean, Total View is like the holy grail for every trader out there, specifically someone like myself as being a day trader, because there's a lot of you listeners out there that are swing traders and investors, but don't realize that, that you're thinking like sometimes you're too late to the party, because by the time you look at these things, they're like, oh, already went off. Is it too late to chase? Is it too late to buy it? Well, as a day trader, we look at and see what's happening, where the algorithms are, where the high frequency charts are. Sometimes you're talking about dark pools. They're all here on the NASDAQ book viewer, and here in the NASDAQ that book viewer, this kind of shows us where all those orders are. You see where all the buyers are, where all the sellers are, you, and you basically have a game plan. And more importantly, when you see those big iceberg orders, you could see, are they getting executed? Are they, you know, cause sometimes you see like a big block order out there and like, did the guy get executed or not? And sure enough, you'll see that on the book viewer, which you, you know, that will lead you onto the stock is going to make a new, maybe a new resistance level, which you'll see in a couple of more slides. Right. And you know what? I want to use Occidental Petroleum um, Corp, ticker OXY, as an example. And I guess the first question you're asking yourself, where should we expect Oxy to make a bounce? Well, when you, when, you look at, when you look at Oxy, right, you see how the stock is trending down. And the first thing people think, like, do I sell it here? Do I get out of it? And, you know, the trend is your friend. You don't want to buck the trend. But there's only one way to figure that out, Jill. And your listeners have to understand is, like, it's not us. Where's the next biggest iceberg order? Where are the next big block orders? Where's the institutions? Where are they putting their limit orders on the, the exchange? And when you go to the next slide, you could basically see that. And right there, you could see that there is literally 111,000 share buyers sitting out there and there's six orders that make up that order at $55.60. Now, you got to think about this, Jill. We're not 
looking at any other indicator. We're not looking at any other news. It has nothing to do with that. But when you go right to the exchange, this is the floor of the exchange, you're seeing that there's a big iceberg order out there. So in theory, what, did, what does that become? A support level. Right. So did it bounce off of support? Well, when you go to the next slide, you could see clear as day there that the stock literally did come back down, started right around 930, started trending down, and then it got right around 5560. And you could see from those candles, it's been hovering there for about two, three minutes. It was a one minute candles. And boom, the stock went from 5560 straight up to 5760 in a matter of what? 30 minutes. See, that's and, – and, and by the way, Jill, this applies to every stock. This is not just, just the oil sector, but I'm bringing up specifically the oil sector because the market was so volatile and was so much action. People like, can I jump into these stocks? Or can I get into them? And there's your example of if you just follow the money and you follow the orders, that will give you a sense of game plan to stop worrying about what happened in the past but to see what you're using on a NASDAQ book viewer to view the future, which is the right. orders that are out there. And we can see that on your next chart here, it just, Oxy just continued to, to steadily move up. Right. So now the next thing you have to think about is, what do we all want to do? Take a profit. The stock went to $62. The thing is going up. And, and that is a substantial run up. Just in the morning, 930, went from 57. It's at 62. So as a trader, you always have to think like, and we always worry about this. When do I take a profit? Am I taking it too soon? Am I taking it too late? Well, the only way who's ever going to help answer that question to you is, Where's the orders out there? What's the street doing? So we go back to the total view. Right. Yeah. And we can see it on, on the, our next chart here where you have the arrows I indicating that um, it's kind of, you know, the market's telling you. Well, and, and you know what, Jill, there are orders at every single price level. You know, the NASDAQ book viewer really breaks it down very simple at every single penny level. And the thing is, a lot of people get discouraged. They look at it and they see so many numbers. But the bottom line is, I don't care about the 100 share seller. I don't care about the nine share seller. I care about the guy that's out there right now at $62.26, which where did that number ever come from? But there's 126,000 shares. There's 11 orders out there. That's a hell of a lot more than you and I will probably put out there. So, and that's a lot of money when you add it up. You're talking over $6 million worth of stock out there. So what do you think? Let's go out there and sell it where they're selling. Right. And to wrap up here, we can see on our final chart, it did in fact fail to move higher. Right. Basically, if you look at the next chart, you could see it, it went to that resistance levels. And if you didn't get out at that resistance, now the stock it, right around 1030, and it started just dwindling down little by little. And now you're down to 59. And that's about... You know, having a game plan as a trader and the value of the book viewer. If you knew where those orders were and you had that game plan, you don't have to worry about too much of the other stuff. You could just focus on what's going out there on the future of the, of the limit orders out there on the NASDAQ uh, book viewer. And that will give you that game plan, knowing where to get in and where to get out, which will explain what is really a support and resistance level, which everybody is really kind of figuring out. And there it is, right? Simple as just following the orders. All right, Fausto, I appreciate the insight as always. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Market Reporter at NASDAQ.